Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today we're looking at transport in plants and so our focus today will be on the xylem and the phloem vessels. These vessels, they have specific adaptations in making them effective in transporting substances throughout the plant. The objectives for today is to look at how substances flow through the plant and also their directions. We are also aim to understand the adaptations of these transporting vessels in making them unique and also effective in transporting specific substances. We are also going to look at how these structures are arranged within a plant stem. Point to note is that substances are transported in plants by means of the vascular bundle which contains xylem and phloem vessels. The vascular bundle is located throughout the entire plant starting from the roots all the way through to the leaves. However, today we're only going to focus on the vascular bundle inside of plant stems. And so if you should zoom into a plant stem, you'll realize that these structures are arranged in a particular way. Looking under a microscope, you will notice that the middle region will be where the vascular bundles are located. And so let us look at a plant stem in a little bit more details. The outermost region of a plant stem is called the epidermis. Going inwards, you have the cholenchyma. Then you have the parenchyma. Together, they make up the cortex of the stem. There you have the phloem. You also have the xylem. And I want you to notice in the plant stem how the phloem and the xylem are arranged. The phloem is closer to the outermost region, while the xylem is closer to the innermost region of the plant stem. And the uniqueness for this is to prevent excess evaporation of water from the plant stem while water is being transported upwards in the plant. And so the xylem will be on the innermost part for decreased evaporation. Together, again, as means of reminder, the phloem and the xylem, they are called vascular bundle. A very unique structure in the plant stem as well is called a cambium. And the cambium is what separates the phloem from the xylem. In the most central part of a plant stem, it is called the pith. Now, if we should look at one of these vascular bundles in more details, you'll realize the phloem, again, on the outermost part, the xylem on the innermost part, and separated by a cambium. Now, it is time to now look at the entire structure, and you can see the direction of a flow of substances, which we're going to talk about later, and also the arrangement of the phloem, the xylem, and also the cambium. So let us now focus on the xylem vessel. Now the important function of the xylem vessel is to transport water and mineral salts. So on the arrow flowing upwards, you will see the blue particles representing water, the orange and the black particle will represent different mineral salts. And so the walls of the xylem vessel contains lignin. So you can say the walls of the xylem vessel is lignified. Some facts about the xylem vessel is that one, as a means of reminder, which we mentioned before, is that it transports water and mineral salts. Also, it contains dead cell. And so generally speaking, you can say the xylem is dead. And so there are two dead structures in the xylem, which are the tracheids, and those are the dead 
tube-like structures that are mainly for transport. And you also have the sclerenchyma, and the sclerenchyma, they are dead when they are mature. And they are the structures that contain lignin that will give strength to the walls of the xylem. Again, the xylem contains lignin for strength, and this is relating to the sclerenchyma. Also, the transport that takes place inside of the xylem is passive transport, which means there is no need for energy for the movement of water and mineral salts. Notice again, there is a one-way flow of substances throughout the xylem vessel. So substances, which are the water and mineral salts, they flow from the roots towards the leaves of the plant. Now let's look at the phloem vessel. The phloem vessel contains a sieve plate. There are some sieve pores and also the sieve tube. Together, all of these structures make up what they call the sieve cell or the sieve tube cell. And on the side of the sieve tube, you have companion cells. And I'm going to talk about the importance of companion cells in a few seconds. Now, some important facts about the phloem vessel. One is that it transports plant food in the form of sugars, particularly sucrose. And sucrose is a disaccharide. And if you notice on the arrows, you'll see those hexagonal shape, two of them together, which make up the sucrose. And also other nutrients as plant food are also transported in this way. The movement of plant food and sugars throughout the plant is called translocation. Another important fact that we need to know about the phloem is that there's a two-directional flow of substances by active transport. So notice the substances are being transported in two ways, up and down, compared to the xylem, which was only one way upwards. And so this is done by active transport because there's some need for energy. And so remember again, passive transport, there's no need for energy, but active transport requires energy. The phloem contains sieve tube cells, and they are very important for transport. They are transporting tubes within the phloem. The phloem vessel contains companion cells, and companion cells are very important in providing energy for the sieve tube to carry out their active transport. And so you can imagine that the companion cells would be packed with mitochondria to provide energy by means of respiration. Now, the phloem vessel also contains parenchyma, and parenchyma are the living cells within the phloem vessel. Now, put it all together again as a means of reminder that the phloem and the xylem, they are separated by the cambium. The phloem in the stem will be closer to the outermost part, while the xylem will be closer to the innermost part. There is a one-directional flow through the xylem, while there is a two-directional flow in the phloem. And remember again, the xylem transport water and mineral salts, while the phloem transport sugars and nutrients. And so at this point, I hope you understand the movement of substances throughout plants. And we are at the end of the lesson. And I am looking forward to see you in other lessons. Stay safe until we meet again.